Welcome to another edition of Hariba Raman Academy. Uh, this installment is titled Depth Profiling of Multilayer Polymer Films by Confocal Micro Raman Spectroscopy. Uh, let's begin by describing the sample that I prepared and these spectra and the depth profile that you're seeing associated with it. Uh, this is essentially a homemade sample. I took some uh, polymer packing material that came with a, a monitor that I purchased. There was a large sheet of very thick polyethylene terephthalate and then around the edge of the monitor there were some very thin films of uh, polyethylene with some adhesive on them. Well I got the idea that maybe I could make uh, just artificially a multi-layer film uh, by pressing the polyethylene on top of the polyethylene terephthalate and just testing how effective uh, one could confocally uh, profile the depth in moving the focal plane down through the polyethylene through this very weak uh, interface into the polyethylene terephthalate. And so that's, that's what we'll look at today. And I'll show you uh, not the actual data acquisition, but then how to treat the data afterward when you have obtained this depth profiling. So what you're looking at now uh, are data and a data set, this one called 2Film underscore 2, uh, which was obtained with the laser beam incident upon uh, this two-layer film uh, and parallel to the normal of this two-layer film. And then what I did was to just uh, begin with the beam appro focused approximately at the surface, which would be at the polyethylene, and that that would be approximately the zero position and then move the laser beam or move the stage up which is to say move the focal plane of uh, the microscope objective in the laser beam down through the uh, the two layer sample now we can click on this letter I here for information about the experiment as it took place and this is where all the metadata are stored so that you can see that what I used was the Explora and I basically exposed, I used a total of nine second integration time. I was being oh kind of slow. I wanted to make sure that I got as good a signal to noise as I can uh, with the slit being at its most narrow position, 100 micrometers, and the hole at its smallest position for the Explorer, 100 micrometers, and um, a total of uh, three seconds for three accumulations, uh, which is to say a total of nine second integration time, with the spectrometer set at 1500 wave numbers. Uh, this is our actual laser wavelength, and uh, all the other settings are indicated here as far as the detector size, the CCD and the, the original Z position of the stage. Zero. Okay, so there's all the information about our experiment. And um, now what you see in this screen is essentially a collection of all of the spectra overlaid. And notice I have three brackets here, a red, blue in the solid line, blue in the dotted line uh, and if we want to change that make it make the blue active we can now just click on the blue arrow here or if we want to make the green arrow active we can make that click on the green arrow and uh, what I've done here is uh, I've bracketed the blue and the green around uh, polyethylene Raman bands and I'm moving the, the red bracket essentially around the carbonyl band of uh, the polyethylene terephthalate. And then as I did that, you can see that this, the response of, of this profile for the counts was changing as I moved that bracket. And what do we mean by a response here? Well, and I'm just going to expand this. Uh, these are basically the integrated intensity, intensities of these peaks between the green, the blue, and the red cursors. And so what we see is that if we 
if we segregate off the peak areas associated with the polyethylene, then the polyethylene is strongest from approximately two and a half, once the beam is fully into the film, oh to about, let me say around 30, uh, well 35 uh, micrometers or so. Alright, so this film is probably approximately, uh, probably 30, 30 micrometers. All right, and then uh, once the focal plane starts moving down through the polyethylene, then we start seeing the onset of the peaks associated with the polyethylene terephthalate. And so if you wanted to, you could generate a depth profile just from tracking the peaks associated with the different chemical compositions. And uh, also, if you wanted to identify the particular spectra at any loca acquired at any location in these depths, you could do so by moving the cursor in this profile or map page and then you see over here is the spectrum associated uh, with with that particular position. Okay, so now we're at a position of basically five micrometers and that's indicated down here. It says five, right? So that's at five micrometers and this is the spectrum acquired at five micrometers. And as we move through this, you're going to want to watch these bands right here as we move through the polyethylene and move deeper and deeper now towards the bottom of the polyethylene. Now you begin to see the polyethylene terephthalate becoming absolutely dominant in the spectrum and the polyethylene essentially vanishes. And that's because, as you can tell from the signal to noise, the polyethylene terephthalate is a much stronger Raman scatterer than is the polyethylene. Now we've looked at this depth profiling uh, as a mean or by by peak area, by selective uh, by selectively picking off peaks that are associated with uh, with this uh, material. But we can also get a profile by um, modeling as well. And how do we do that? Well, I'm going to click uh, this set of data back on. And now I'm going to acquire, uh, open up two spectra, my reference spectra, acquired of these films from which I made the multilayer. And I acquired these spectra separately. All right, so here you see the blue spectrum is polyethylene and the green spectrum is polyethylene terephthalate. These are my reference spectra. So what I'd like to do then is to load these reference spectra for modeling in order to then use not just one particular peak but the entire spectra to then model my depth profile. And I'll do that by clicking on this button here which is just to the left of the stop sign and because I had pre just previously highlighted this spectrum, which said PET1, and I had both of these spectra loaded, uh, I will now click Get All. And when it does that, it has basically extracted those two spectra as my model spectra. And now what you can see is that in my depth profile that's generated from the uh, uh, from the modeling now we have uh, a depth profile that is not just from one peak but from a depth pro profile generated from re known reference spectra and here we see now a much sharper interface than we saw uh, with the one peak and I have these plotted normalized uh, so that if we take into account the fact that um, the beam was perhaps not in focus at the right at the very top and it reached its maximum here at about two at two and a half uh, micrometers it seems reasonable then that the thickness the actual thickness uh, of this uh, of this polymer film oh is probably going to be 
I would say approximately in the 35 micrometer uh, regime. Now I said thickness uh, but remember this accounts for just the stage travel uh, and so what we'd really have to do is get the um, uh, get the refractive index of the polyethylene and the polyethylene terephthalate in order to convert this axis into a true depth axis for the polymer film. But if you essentially wanted to get a, uh, a general map or profiling that was approximately uh, close to the, the true uh, depths and you wanted to identify films that were buried or underneath then uh, uh, with, with a limited degree of accuracy then the stage motion itself uh, can work can work quite well. Well, that's uh, our edition for today of the Rob, Raman Harib, uh, Hariba's Raman Academy. So you can see that these are not scripted, uh, and I do my best to uh, to just uh, speak extemporaneously. If you have any questions about the work that's done here, or uh, have any requests for further uh, videos that might help explain uh, our software, our data analysis procedures, or even experiments that may be of interest to you with our Raman instrumentation, uh, please contact, contact us at Hariba Scientific. Thank you.